Okay, let's get the show on the road. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Ian. And I've known this old rogue to the right of me. You haven't seen quite yet, because he's out of the picture. Mr. Morgan. Oh, I'm just here. sticking his head in the picture now, because I'm talking about him. <laughs> For probably the last 15 years or more. Bit of a colourful life, to be honest. Like most of us, plenty of skeletons in the closet. We all have those, don't we? So, he's asked me to spend the afternoon sitting on his comfy sofa with the dog, reading some chapters of his new book. So we're going to give it a quick run through, and let's see how we get on. So, chapter four, Slice of Mojo, Freemason's Tavern. Bit of a Raven Alky in his day, but his strongest stuff he drinks now is Vinto. <laughs> Freemasons Tavern. I started the Coventry Blues Club on Thursday nights at my parents' pub, the Freemasons. This is the time I was playing with my band, the Travelling Riverside Blues Band. I booked different blues bands from all over the country and later varied it to different types of bands. On Tuesday night, Jan Budd put the folk nights on. It was an awesome night in the Masons, whatever night you came in, plus the pedigree was always flowing. Plus, we had a great games room with an amazing jukebox. We always had lots of bikers and musicians in the pub, lots of local characters. Jam Bud. Jam Bud says, remember the karaoke in the Freemasons? She remembers your mum. You used to phone me about 11 a.m. on a Sunday morning to say breakfast is ready, brown bread with prawn mayo, because she said it was her favourite. <laughs> she said with the karaoke, she used to sing Nat Naturally, Raining in My Heart and Blueberry Hill. And Tony and I used to sing the Elvis Presley song, Wooden Heart, together. Jan used to do the door and the lights on the Tuesday Thursday nights, when Tony was otherwise busy playing with his band. Jan always remembers you and Angie and I and mine and George, the biker from the Coventry Slaves, turned up with a few of his biker mates. <laughs> and they weren't amused, followed by Goody and the cricket team turning up because it was rained off. Then back around to your house, tripping with Will. So many things happened. Another time, said Jan. Probably in a different dimension. Your dad serenaded back at me at the lock-ins. Must remember this with your dad singing as the time goes by with me sitting at the bar with my legs around the beer pumps and lots of other things we did. Jan says it's not telling us those. Will Fearson. Will is a great friend of mine from the Freemasons Tavern in Coventry back in the 1980s. I just bought a three litre Granada car some weeks beforehand, so I asked Will if he would come on holiday with me, and he said yes. Will said, I think the exploring and travelling about I do is down to you. When you took me down to Cornwall that time, around Bodcastle and Tintagel, I loved it from then. I said, I'm going to visit places like this when I get my car and my licence. Look at me now, all over the place. I can even remember the meal you bought in the cafe just down the road from the pub in the Cobweb. The food was sausage, chips and egg and peas. I still have that to this day. Great times and great memories. Conversations between Tony Morgan and Will Fearson. Will says, just been listening to the Steve Miller band on the radio. Brought memories of me walking into the Freemasons on the evening opening times. And you being stoned and wrecked behind the bar trying to act normal. It's been trying to act normal for years. <laughs> Will says, remember Burton Bassett Hill near Southam? We went out there in your Granada car. We could see for miles. It was a great view from there. When we took some ease until sunrise before making our way back home. Tony says, yes, I remember that, Will. I thought I was driving slow coming back, but you told me I was driving fast. Will says, you did that a lot. <laughs> I can remember when we left the Freemasons one night and you had a good few beers. Just by the flat near the chip shop, you swerved the car to miss a black taxi, and the car swerved all over the road, left to right. All I kept seeing were those big trees getting closer and closer every time the car swerved towards the right. I was in the back looking out between the back seats with my fingers nearly through the leather seats because I was shitting myself <laughs> and squeezing the seats. You were just giggling like some nutcase. I was shaking when we got out of the car, and I can always remember your laugh. Will says, can you remember when we sat on the bench across the road from the pub by the train station? I think the carnival was on. 
and you made a Cheech and Chong massive fat joint and we sat there for a bit with you puffing on that the way you used to smoke them try not to draw attention to ourselves quite hard that one with big clouds of smoke and us giggling trying to think of the name of the pub now I think we went in there because you couldn't go past a pub unless we popped in for a half <laughs> I remember it was called the rocket Tony says I remember when I was in the Masons you used to be a busy bee all over the place you would come in the pub popped your head round and the next minute you would be gone. You'd come to the pub about four or five times a night. You couldn't stand still. You were all over the place. Will Will says, remember when he was down Cornwall and we was in the pub, the Cobweb, amazing pub. We met some blokes down there and we ended up at his place up the road from the pub. His hallway and all the doors were wallpapered, all the same with large colourful flowers. So when you went out to the toilet and was off your red, it was so confusing because everywhere looked the same and you couldn't find the right door to get back into the room. Tony says, that's so funny reading that, Will, Chris, and I are laughing our heads off. <laughs> Wasn't that the house in the woods? Will says it was such a funny little house. It was surrounded in trees and bushes and was in the woods. We used to find weird and wacky places. Well, you did, Tony. Tony says, Christine says we could all have died, Will. Uh, that things all the things we did but so funny looking back on it if you think of any more my friend let me know you have made my day meeting there's more to go yes <laughs> hell broke loose at the freemasons oh my god one night in the freemasons oh, yeah. tavern whilst doing relief for my parents two policemen came into the pub they were not in uniform and went to the games room to play pool they were being cocky to everybody. They started to wind up all the bikers up. And then all hell broke loose. Tables and chairs went flying. So they ran for the door in the bar because, because the pub doors were closed and more tables and chairs went over. They ended up on the floor getting a right kicking. Soon after that, all the bikers disappeared and the two policemen left. A few days later, I had to give a statement to the police station. Another month later, I had a letter saying I would have to appear in court. This is where it gets really interesting. Tripping in court. <laughs> Your Honour. I was not looking forward to going to court, but I had to be there for 12 midday. They told me to sit on the bench until they called me. It wouldn't be long. Whilst I was waiting, I necked an eighth of black to calm my nerves. <laughs> they decided not to call me until 1.30pm. By then I was tripping out of my box. I could just about walk up the stairs to the courtroom. They called me straight into the witness box and started to ask me questions. I was talking so much that the judge said to me, Mr Morgan, I will make you contempt of court if you do not shut up. The judge said we were going to adjourn for ten minutes whilst Mr Morgan reads his statement because I couldn't remember what I put down. So they gave me, not even seeing the writing on the paper, I could have been looking at a piece of blank paper. I was alone in the courtroom. I was just about standing. I felt high as a kite. I remember them coming back into the courtroom and telling me to go because they didn't need me anymore. I thought, thank God. <laughs> no one touches my father. Another time at the Freemasons, when two rival bikers came in to get one of the club bikers, they were all tall and one was built like a brick shit house. <laughs> one threw a chair at my father and really hurt his chest. But my father got hold of him in a headlock and was taking him outside. When I saw the other bikers heading for my father, so I jumped on his back and pulled him over. I put my fingers in his eyes and told him, I'll poke your fucking eyes out if you fucking move. <laughs> Excuse the French, I'm only reading this. <laughs> Luckily, he just stayed there. When my father came back, oh, I let God. the man go. He just got up and walked out, and we never saw them again. Getting gigs and driving for Ronnie Byers. My old mate Roddy from the specials got hold of me to do some work for his band, getting gigs and driving for him. Every weekend we were busy going down to London to play in different places. The Dublin Castle, Hope and Anchor and Dingwalls, plus loads of other places. I remember one time doing gigs along the south coast, starting at Brighton, plus a radio session to advertise the band. Yeah. Then to Worthing and then Hastings. They were awesome times, being with Roddy and his brother Mark and Peter Davis from the UK subs on drums and sometimes slim on the squeeze box. The band was so tight, but it was just so much of a pleasure to listen to them. Did he go? Yeah. How's that? Fantastic. All right. So just play that back and let's see how 
Oh, I think it will be fine. You don't want to do all that again. That was fantastic. That's Ian. There you are. That was Ian. And thank you very much for listening. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you, Ian. You take care. Bye. And we'll do another chapter soon. Thank you.